I want to teach you a track that's really simple and as we tend to do on Simply Soprano Sax Starters we tend to take really simple pieces of repertoire or songs that teach you the skills so that you don't need to be overladen with theory um, it's just another way of learning this particular song, some of you might even know it already that was just me testing to make sure it's always good to test the tone of your soprano saxophone before you start so anyway, without further ado, join me and we'll do this together really cool song, really simple lines and by the end of it, you'll enjoy and learn at the same time, only here on Simply Soprano Sax Starters And welcome to the program. I love teaching how to play this two starters. I myself was a starter once and it was very difficult to get material that taught how to play the soprano sax. It's just assumed worldwide that the alto sax is the most accessible saxophone to start with and they're not entirely wrong. Um, however I started with this so to a degree it's easy to say that it's not impossible to start with a soprano sax I think what's really necessary, sorry about the passing plane it just chose to pass when I was recording I think it's um, a prerequisite to be very passionate about playing this instrument and if you love it and you have artists who play it then jump on and learn how to play my name is CJ and as I said this is Simply Soprano Sax Starters Hey. Would you do me a big favor? If this is in any way appealing to you, if it's helping you even in the minutest bit, would you do me a big favor and subscribe to the channel and then keep checking back, clicking on and learning. Go through the videos. I keep adding videos. I've got so many videos there. And the thing with the videos or the clips, the tutorials are, they're done in a very unique way. You won't find anyone else who teaches the way I do. Number one, I'm an educator by profession, fully trained teacher with a, um, a postgraduate degree in teaching. So I use techniques that lend themselves to various kinds of learners, but I go for the very easiest way. Remember that the channel is for those of you who are starting. Also, before we jump in, why don't you have a look on Udemy because I have a cause this one it's a fabulous cause and it's really gaining traction now I'll be honest with you I hardly advertise I think I've only ever put something on Facebook once but there are various people who are coming on and tasting and realizing just how easy it is to learn using my style so if you want to take this a bit further or you want something that's really structured lesson by lesson starting from the beginning touching various topics like even models of saxophone touching keys and ranges embouchure which is probably the most important thing you can learn on a wind instrument all of these and teaching you in a way that helps you to gain skills without even knowing it because you're enjoying it so much if that's your thing you might want to check out this course um, it's not free but I'll tell you what for the price of a meal okay a very fast meal you can gain knowledge that will actually help you to both advance in something that you enjoy and to help and bless other people right should we begin So with a curved saxophone
let's start by establishing what key we're playing in. We're playing in the key of A, in the key of A. All right, so these two fingers, one and two, support your saxophone, as you've learned to do, your thumb at the bottom, and then thumb rest here, right hand, if you're right-handed, hopefully, and then just give it a blow. If you haven't played your saxophone yet, this is a great opportunity for you to warm up. Check some of my other videos and you'll find out just how to do that. I choose to blow in warm air. Now, depending on the temperature, it's a hot summer's day today. It's about 30 degrees. So your instrument is going to warm up a lot quicker. I'm feeling it now and it doesn't feel too cold, but it will still need some warming up if you've taken it out of the case, okay? especially if you're indoors. So. Draw in air, blow through. Now I've already played mine, as I've said, so it is warm. So let's go. The notes of the A major scale. Okay. Now that octave, you achieve that by pressing your octave key over there. All right, sorry if I slightly went out of focus. Um, so let's familiarize ourselves with the keys that we're actually playing, the notes that we're actually playing, okay? As you can see, I'm still croaking a bit because the saxophone is still warming up. If that happens to you, don't panic. As it warms up, your tone becomes rounder and nicer, okay? Now, I always play something leading into a melody. Um, it's a good thing to do. The actual melody is da 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 da. All right? Now, I start by playing something that leads into that. It's a great way of feeling your way into both rhythm and melody. And um, I usually give tips in my um, tutorials that lend themselves to the skill that you're trying to learn. Now, within this, I'll tell you what skill we're learning a bit later because I like the flowing into the actual lesson and enjoying it before you start thinking about the technical bits. For me personally, I think that's a better way of learning. So if you think about it, you're starting on A and going to B. Now, if someone was singing and he was just getting ready to uh, vocalize, get into the song, that's another great way of gaining pitch. Now, that's the tip. Pitching using the soprano saxophone is what many people sort of steer away from. It's a straight instrument. The curve in the other saxophone, okay, the alto saxophone, actually helps you to pitch. It helps pitching. You don't have that in the soprano saxophone. It's straight. So it does mean you're blowing a stream of air through this long pipe. And what that needs is practice that helps you to keep your airstream steady so that it's not wobbling and fluctuating because that disturbs your tone. And two ways of achieving that are by practicing your embouchure and then practicing long tones. See, we're doing the technicals and we didn't necessarily need to mention them at the beginning of the lesson. Now, if I change my embouchure and I try and, um, let's say I use a, a rather loose embouchure. Look at the difference. You can tell that the second one was rounder, warmer. So your embouchure is necessary. Remember, this is also a ballad. 
ballads are slow songs. And what that indicates is you will need more air. You will need more air in order to record, in order to play, in order to perform. Whatever it is that you're doing, you will need more air. So remember to draw breath. Alright, so let's jump into the how-to. So this involves the notes. We've said it's the key of A, so the A major scale. Have a look at some of the older videos in order to familiarize yourself with the key of A. Right, so the notes, what you're playing, whenever you are learning a song on the saxophone and you're, I teach how to play by ear, and I forgot to mention that in the course, the course is actually called Play Saxophone by Ear, Learn to Play Saxophone by Ear. All right, and um, the thing about learning how to play anything by ear, whether it's the guitar, I play a number of instruments, and one thing I've always used is sing the melody in there. If you can remember the melody in there, there is no way that you can forget the melody when you're performing. Also, rather than needing a script to remind you, it's there. There's nowhere that the music is safer than in there. And once it moves from there to there, and by there what I mean is you actually playing with your heart, playing from within here, so that you're not just playing by script or by what we call in education rote memory, okay, hard, your hard drive. It's just coming straight from your, we liken your mind to a computer coming straight from the hard drive. No, it's coming from there. And the difference is when it comes from there, that's when you can create. That's when you can uh, create alternate patterns. And that's when you can actually do more in terms of embellishments, okay, when it comes from there. But it's got to go there first. It goes through here, up there. Try and memorize it. And that just happens by you oh, yeah, just singing it until you wake up and you're singing it. And then it moves from there to there. So, from B to C sharp, back to B, and then G sharp. So let's play that together. Play it again. E, okay? You're jumping from this region of the saxophone to somewhere within just over the middle. Okay, G is where this one, two, three, that's where I call it the sweet spot of the soprano saxophone, indeed of any saxophone, because they, those notes are the easiest to play. So anything lower than that, like F, and then when you're getting to E, and then D, those, they sound lovely, they sound rich. That was D, wasn't it? And it's, you can tell, it sounds lower and richer. But in order to jump from here to here, just remember, you're further down that tube. So you need what? Exactly. You need more air pushed through at a steady pace in order to achieve that. You're going to have to practice that if that's something that you don't quite get at the beginning. You will get it. Just listen to me. You will get it. It can sometimes be a little bit frustrating when you're trying to pitch it and you're not getting it, but you will. You definitely will. Okay? It needs repetition. Repetition. A good way of practicing that is by going from highs and then going to lows. By so doing, what your brain is doing is it's recording the amount of depth, consistency, and pressure that it needs to 
used to push that note through successfully. So when you're getting it wrong, don't worry. Just keep trying. And what your brain is doing is it's trying to pitch and catch that spot where the sound is correct and what you need to do in order to get it. Okay? So... And then you play that again. The last time you play this, A, 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 B, G sharp, A. Okay? And while you're playing that, just remember, you can, after it's moved from there to there, you can be a bit more creative. Those are two different ways. Da, 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 da. Or da, 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 da. Or da, 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 da. See what happens is if you, if you sing it in here, your mind will align itself to the notes that need to be played to produce that melody. And eventually that's how you build up on your ability to create uh, and embellish on the fly. Okay? That's it. Let's have another listen to the, um, the whole melody as played. And that's it from me. I'm gonna prepare something else. And this is, this is the exercise that we're gonna be doing. So grow with me, come along with me, learn the songs. I do give enough space in between recordings in order for you to practice, 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 and then pick up. And always go back and perform with the performing track. So I always perform it, go on and play along with me. And um, by so doing, you'll be picking up so much skill so quickly. Don't forget to subscribe. This is the happy man, CJ. And um, I honestly can't wait to come your way again. It's exciting to create. It's nice to learn songs. You need to learn other people's songs. But when you start creating, whether it's embellishing or writing your own tunes, then you really are on track to mastery, which is what I always say. Once again, from me to you, take care. Simply Soprano Sax Starters is your channel. So see you soon. Bye for now.